But can you imagine how people felt about Paul? Him talking about something you can't see? <laughs> Jesus did that. He cursed the fig tree, Mark 11. He said, I, I cursed be you. No man shall eat fruit of you ever. And when he cursed that fig tree, it was still green. It was still green. Hadn't, you couldn't see that it was dead. But Jesus cursed it. The minute he cursed it, the minute that you, the minute you curse cancer, the minute you curse uh, strep throat, the minute you curse something, it's dead. It may take a day or two for it to get well, but it will get well, praise God, because you decree the thing, and it shall be established. Amen. Light follows. Welcome to Faith Connection, brought to you by the Ministry of Faith Life Church in Hindman, Kentucky, with Pastor Max Lund. Join us this week as we delve into the Word of God and experience the wonders of Jesus Christ for healing, prosperity, salvation, and daily living. And now, with today's inspiring message, Pastor and Teacher Max Sloan. I didn't know. And uh, it's, it's beginning to work for me. Hmm. See, that's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God only. Because, see, when you keep hearing the word and keeping the hear, faith doesn't come when you first speak the word of God. You hear it and you hear it and you hear it, and when faith comes into your spirit, well then what happens is we got to listen, we gotta have hope. And I'm gonna show you some things, but if we make our confessions every day, faith is going to bring what we desire and and what we need and what we want in our lives. It may take a little while, but it's coming. I know it. I know that's the Word of God. And see, when you know that you know that you know that you know, like the Apostle Paul said, he said, I know, but I know. When you start feeling that and not feeling it, but when you start knowing that in your spirit, then it's just about time for a manifestation of your substance that you've been having faith for. So we're going to look at it. Uh, Father, I thank you today, and I praise you right now, Father God, for your word. I thank you, Father God, for every person that tithe and give. I give you praise for that, and I give you glory for it, Father God. And I ask you to bless them back a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before we get to faith, uh, Hebrews 11, I'm going to read you something here. It says, it's in the book of, you say, some people ask me, said, how come you decree these things? Well, because it's in the book of Job. It says in, in 20, uh, chapter 22, verse 28, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Now, he didn't say that it might be established. He didn't say that, eh, I don't know. No, he said if you decree something, if you say something, if you make a declaration of something, it will be established. Amen. So that's what we're going to look at today. I want you first, I want you to look at that thermostat over there. Get, just, just, just look at him right there. Look at it on the wall. Because you're going to remember, you're going to know what the thermostat is today. Praise God. Thermostat is on that wall. But if that thermostat's not hooked up to the furnace, it won't establish nothing. See, that thermostat is hope. Stay with me. Hope is a goal setter. If you don't have any goals that you... Uh, the creed and declare and call those things to be not every day. If you don't have the hope, your faith has nothing to bring. So, see Hebrews 11 1. It says, Now faith is the substance. Somebody say, Faith is the substance. And say, Everybody say, Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. What substance? of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now when you have evidence of something, you know that it's, that it's going to get the job done. Courts, the lawyers in here, they've got evidence of people uh, that they did the crime and that evidence brings a guilty or not guilty verdict. So our faith is substance, tangible Something we can touch. Are things hoped for? Now, you know, some people say, well, you know, hope's in the future. It is, but if you don't mix it with your faith, 
I mean, you know, if you're just hoping and praying, it's not going to happen. I said, if you're just hoping and praying, you know, if you hear people say, well, I'm hoping and praying, well, what is it? They left out faith because faith is substance. Things that you can feel that you need in your life and that you are hoping for. And it's also, faith is also evidence of things not seen. Every one of you walked in this building this morning and you sat down in that chair and you didn't know that chair would hold you up. But you had faith it would, wouldn't you? Amen. Huh? Amen. What if somebody would have loosened the screws and you sat down and boom? We, that's faith. faith. Faith is something that you cannot yet see. You did not yet see until you sat down that that chair was going to hold you up. But now that you've, huh? Now, I get, now that you've sat down in that chair, you've got it. So now you've got to move on to something else. Faith's got to move on to something else because you have the tangible evidence. Amen. Faith is what makes real the things we hope for. That's good. Faith is what makes real or brings them into a reality of this physical realm that we hope for. It is proof of what we cannot see. Now how long are you going to stand in faith and believe God for what you need and what you, for what you very badly need or what you want? A month? A week? No, you've got to endure. You've got to stand in there until faith comes. Because when faith comes, you're going to have what you can't see. Amen? That's what this is all about. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence thing not seen. Faith is the substance or the raw material of things hoped for. Every morning when I get out there and I, I confess this land is Faith Life Churches, we have a church, I see a church, praise God, and I back it by Mark 11, 23 and 24. Well then praise God, what? I have set my goals to let faith bring substance to what I'm saying. Amen? Amen. Well, now you can't just you can't have hope, it's future. Yes, it's future, and it's in the future. That's why we set our goals. If you set that dial on that thermostat to whatever you want it to be, and if it's heat or if it's cold. If that thermostat is wired up to the heart, wired up to the furnace, it will, that furnace will run as long as it takes to bring the desire of what you've got to sit for. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So you see, faith is substance or the raw material of things hoped for. So what do we hope for, people? Our desires. What are we hoping for? Our desires. So you see, faith is the proof, like this, like this set up there, or faith is the uh, evidence of things that we desire. Amen. It's the proof of things we can't see. I got to get this home to you today. This means we can have the things that we cannot see. Amen. Right of Hebrews, I don't know who it was, nobody does, but I kind of believe it might be Paul, because that sounds like something is right. And somebody could have said, you know, Paul's got some good stuff, man. He's talking, he's seeing things he can't see. Wow. That must be pure Columbia or something. That's what he put No, it's not dope. It's not the, it's the word of God. But can you imagine how people felt about Paul? Him talking about something you can't see. <laughs> Jesus did that. He cursed the fig tree, Mark 11. He said, I, I Cursed be you. No man shall eat fruit of you ever. And when he cursed that fig tree, it was still green. It was still green. Hadn't, you couldn't see that it was dead. But Jesus cursed it the minute he cursed it. The minute that you, the minute you curse cancer, the minute you curse uh, strep throat, the minute you curse something, it's dead. 
It may take a day or two for it to get well, but it will get well, praise God, because you decree the thing, and it shall be established. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Mark 11, 24. Hey, wait just a minute. Look, look, uh, he was left one up in the amplifier. This is good. Now, faith is the assurance. Assurance, that's a good word. That means, man, you cannot doubt in no way because faith is going to bring what you need. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Everybody's got a deed to their home, man. That's a guarantee that you own your home. Faith is a guarantee that you will get the things that you hope for. Somebody gives you a piece of property in Alabama somewhere, you ain't seen it, but you've got the deed. You don't know what it looks like, but it's yours because you've got the title deed of what somebody's given you. Jesus has given us everything we need in the kingdom of God. Now, we have a title deed for it because if we release hope, set our goals, and if we receive it before we ever see it. All right. Being the proof of things which we do not see, and the conviction, there it is, of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed in the senses. People walk by the five natural senses every day. They walk with that. We touch, we touch shoulders and rub shoulders with the physical realm every day. And we rub shoulders and, and we stand close to the physical realm so much every day that we forget about the unseen. It's all in the unseen. It's all in the kingdom of God. And where is the kingdom of God? It's in you. Luke chapter 21 says, Don't look over there for the kingdom. Don't look over here for the kingdom. Don't look up for the kingdom. Right now, if you're alive, it's in you. And it takes faith to bring those things out of the inner man, the kingdom of God, to your natural man. Everybody see that? Amen. Mark 11, 24. Now look what we got to do. Mark 11, 24. This is after Jesus said you can say to the mountain, be thou removed, believe in your heart, shall not doubt, and you'll have what you say. All right? Therefore I say to you, everybody say, he's saying this to me. He said this to you this morning. Therefore I say to you, Luke, Therefore I say to you, Ryan. Therefore I say to you, Pat. Therefore I say to you, everybody. Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. It didn't say, therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, or when you see them. It said, when you pray, believe that you have received them. So you see, if I've got my goal set, and I do every morning, I, I call those things that be not, my goal is set, and it's hooked up with faith because I've already received that, but I can't see it yet. I may still have pain in my body, but I've received my healing. And faith brings it to me. The very minute I noticed some things were happening to me, the very minute that I that I get something of pain in my body, I take authority over it because we've got dominion over it. I take authority over that in the name of Jesus. You will not live in my body in Jesus' name. And I get it. Well, it ain't seem like a minute. Pain's gone. My faith is developing. <clears throat> Amen. It's not yet come, maybe, but it's developing. That's a lot better than running to the cabinet. Now, I'm not telling this. That's a lot better than running to the cabinet and taking five. I don't know. Hey. But if I need five times, I'm going to take it. But if my faith is developing, and my faith is right there, when I speak and make a decree, it leaves. Well, I don't need that stuff. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm not against that stuff. Like I said, I'll take it by the end. Therefore, I say to you what things serve you desire. When you pray, believe you receive them. When you pray, 
believe that you have them. Believe you receive them. The Bible says in the book of John, when you, Jesus said, whatever you pray to the Father and ask the Father in my name, in his, Jesus' name, he shall do it. Didn't say he might, he shall. Don't that build your faith this morning? Man, he's going to do it. He shall do it. So I'll receive you when I pray. Not when I can see it. Not when I can feel it. If I need a car and I'm believing God for a car, praise God, I'm not going to let up. I'm, not, I'm going to set my goals every morning for that car, the kind of car that I want. Not, not just any car, because there's all kinds of cars out there. There's bad motor cars. There's rusty cars. There's everything. So I am specific on what kind of car I want. And that car comes. Hallelujah. Jesus is concerned about our lives, our physical lives. You've got to get this image out of us this morning that we've got to be poor to be humble. I can be just as humble rich as I can poor. All humble means is humbling yourself or bowing down at the Word of God. Letting God's Word be true in every man alive, the Bible says. <laughs> so, if we believe we receive the things we desire, and that's that's faith. Receive them when you can't see them. You shall what? Glory to God. Glory to God. So hope is the goal setter. Hope works in the mind. Faith works in the in your belly, where your spirit is. Remember that song we sang? I've got a river of life, or I've got the spirit of God, or whatever it said there, flowing out of me. I couldn't do nothing until I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I would not even ask somebody, are you born again? Because I wasn't bold enough. I didn't have the courage. But when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, praise God, hallelujah, I could go to anybody and witness. That's what Jesus said to do to the disciples there. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait in an upper room. I got thing this morning, glory to God, I got thing this morning on the way to work that we're in an upper room. I believe Jesus is going to come along and, and the glory of God is going to come in this upper room just like it was in the days when they received the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues in Jerusalem. Because, see, you need that to be a witness. Don't tell everybody when you come to witness. You no know, churches can say, we, this is our night to witness. Well, there ain't going to be nobody home, so don't, you just, just don't tell them when you come. Surprise. Amen. And when they open the door, you got it. Hey, we're from such and such church. This is our night to witness, and we're going to see if you need Jesus. They'll either slam the door in your face or say, come on in. They're probably pretty scared too, ain't they? But <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. So, hope is the goal setter. Faith is what brings things to us. Many people come to be prayed for. Now, see, what brings people to be prayed for is the hope that they'll be healed. But it's got to be faith. You've got to know that when hands is laid upon, the Bible says, when the hands of any believer is laid upon another person, they shall recover. Now, that's good news. I don't have to think about it, praise God. I don't have to deal with it. The minute that hands is laid on me from another believer, well, that's it. I'm recovered. I'm going to recover. That's it. Yeah, yeah. First thing a lot of people do, they go down and plan the funeral when they get bad news. I like this case. Put a picture of the fish because I love the fish. Well, you just plan the death. You're talking about death. Man, go out and fish and not... <laughs> Glory to God. Don't say that. Don't go to just know that God's going to bring those things to pass if hope is connected with faith. Amen. Is this all right? Amen. So see, we've got hope in the heart where faith should be, and we've got faith in the mind where hope should be. Hope is in the mind. That's why the Apostle Paul said, "You've got to renew your mind daily." Romans twelve two, right? Be ye not conformed to this world. That's in every way. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. 
That's what them, uh, what is in cartoons and them people that transforms into these uh, spies, huh? Transformers. Transformers, yeah. Tra they come from one place and they're transformed into something great. So you see, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Like those, uh, they're fighting. The they, they want me? They're vehicles and they're transforming. Oh, they transform themselves into victory. Into. Amen. You can't have much victory in the natural life unless you transform yourself with the Word of God. Amen. Nah, I should do it, man. By the renewing of your mind, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You will never know the will of God for your life. It's in the Bible and it's all good, but you will never know the will of God for your life if you don't take time to renew your mind. You'll never know that it's God's will to heal you if you don't see it in the Word. You cannot have faith where the will of God is never known. Amen. So be you. Huh? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. They come out of the inner man. They come out of your spirit. See, that's what Jesus was talking about. Every time he, every time he said something to somebody, he was looking at the kingdom of God. He was looking at his father. Hallelujah. He said, I don't say nothing my father don't want me to say. I don't do nothing my father tells me not to do. Amen. So, this is what we're talking about today. Hope is like that thermostat over there. He controls the temperature to your house. But by itself, if you've got a furnace and you've got a thermostat, and this furnace, this thermostat's not hooked up to your furnace, you can set it to 100 degrees and it'll never kick on. Hope Faith will never kick in until you've got hope out there. As old God said. I believe this is good. Hallelujah. But if you've got that thermostat hooked up to the heat, the furnace, those wires, you set it to 5,000 degrees, that furnace will run until it gets to 5,000 degrees. That's what faith does. If we've got our hope out there, faith never gives up. Faith always comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It always comes to bring you substance of what you have hope for. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at one last scripture here. Second Corinthians, let's look at 8, verse 8 and 9. Is this pretty simple this morning? Praise God. Okay. 2 Corinthians 8. Let's see. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. No, chapter 4, verse 8. We are troubled on every side. How many of you have felt like you've ever been there? Troubled on every side. <laughs> Life has sometimes has some troubling things, don't it? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Things may come, but they are temporary because everything you face in this natural world we are subject to change. But whatever's inside you, in your spirit, the Word of God will never change. Amen. It will do what it says. Hallelujah. Persecuted, but not forsaken. You cast down but not for the story. Let's go on down to verse 16. For which cause we faint not. No man, see, the Bible says if you don't faint in well-doing, you'll reap in your season. I look at that and I say, Father God, hallelujah, I've been here here. My season has to be about to come. As long as there's life on this earth, there'll be winter. Summer, spring, fall, seasons. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though air outward man perish. This body is perishing every day you live. Going back to the dust. But, yet the 
inward man is renewed day by day. How is your inward man renewed? Because you take the Word of God, you speak that Word of God, it goes through your mind and renews your mind, and it also goes down and renews that inner man day by day, because the inner man never dies. Huh? So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to spend more time. See, if you ever heard people preach, well, women ain't supposed to wear makeup. Women ain't supposed to fix the hair. Blah, blah, blah. That's not in there. It says, let not the adorning of your hair or the putting on of apparel more than you worship God. That day. Come on. Anything can be before God. There have been so many religious people, so many conditions put into the Word of God. Mm -hmm. you know, I preached a bunch of sermons one time, uh, get rid of sacred cows. Get them sacred things out of our lives that we've all been taught, you know. It sounds good, but they're not good. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundance of grace might be through, and he says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, our spirit, is renewed day by day. Now watch this, watch this. For our light affliction, every affliction we go through, God sees it as a light affliction. He was like, well, I don't see it too light. Well, if we would get ourselves to know that we're walking in the spirit realm, walking in the kingdom of God, we can see that as a light affliction and not a death. There it comes. Come on. you got to train your spirit. Train your... Uh, huh? Yeah, see from God's perspective, it's good life. That's so good, brother. Thank you. Ah, let's see. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, you know, you may have six months of bad time in your life, but it's just a moment in God's eyes. We've got to keep our eyes on the Word of God with faith bringing substance and hope set the nose. It says, but which is but for work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. There's going to be an eternal, exceeding, eternal weight of glory come into your lives when this is all over if we stay in faith. The Lord just spoke to me right there and he said, I want everybody in Faith Life Church to every day declare the glory of God. Come to Faith Life Church. Come, glory of God. Woo. Makes it entirely work. While we look not at the things which are seen. Come on, somebody. Now look at this. While we don't look at the things which we can see. I see this month that my bills I can't probably be paid. I see this month, I see right now that I've got pain. Oh, the doctor will give me a death sentence. I've got four days to live. That's what he, that's what Paul said. He says, he says, while we look not at the things which are seen. We're so prone to living in the flesh that we do look at the things that are seen and the things that are felt. Paul says, don't look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. What's things that are not seen? It's the things that the Word of God says we can have if we mix hope as the gold setter and it's tuned in to faith that brings us up. But at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. Everything you face in life today is a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. It's going to change. It's like that weather manual. Well, there's coming a winter storm across Kentucky, but it will not last long. It's going to move on out to the east. That's the way God sees this stuff. He says, it don't matter what Satan's trying to do to you, but it's going to move on now. Yeah. But your life, when you stay in faith, For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen, we are eternal beings, folks. We're living in the eternal kingdom of God. So what should we do? We should look at the things that are not seen because they're eternal. The Word of God is eternal. 
And we put it inside our heart. Jesus called that the ground when he was telling men how to, uh, how to receive the things of the kingdom. Your spirit is the ground. So when you put the Word of God in your heart, your spirit, and you know that you get up every morning and you, you see your goals out there well, every day. I, my goals are set for land. My goals are set for a church. My goals is for this church, body of Christ, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and on fire for God. Amen. When you get on fire for God, you just... This is the Lord. Amen. I mean, that's, don't, 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 now don't look at me like he trying to make me do something. No, I'm trying to make you get in tune with God with what you feel like doing when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't stand it, praise God. You can't, you can't live. Uh, you won't drag you and sag you smooth right along. Amen? Amen. Amen. You little black brother in this church, you know. I'm clapping on my own beat. Listen to my feet. don't want to clap, don't praise God, don't clap. Don't pray, don't raise your hands. That's up to you. But me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen? I'm going to shout because they shouted the walls of Jericho down. Well, no, that really didn't happen. It really happened. They, on that seventh day, they shouted with a great shout and the walls of Jericho come down and guess what the walls of Jericho were doing? It was keeping them from the land of more than enough. Glory to God. The things of God confounds the wise. Amen. Now I'm not saying we gotta roll and, and swallow and rot and fumble and act like dogs and act like fish, you know, and work us running around on the floor, you know. I'm not talking about that, man. I'm just talking about doing what the word of God says to do. Love Jesus. If you fall in love with Jesus. You'll do what he wants us to do. I know. I bet she knows too. Before she fell in love with you, you would not do some of the things that you do now because she wasn't in love with you. And she wouldn't have said, no, I'm not going to. But if she, if we, if we, that's husband and wife. But if we fall in love with Jesus, he's our husband, we're, he's our groom, and we're the bride of the church, we're going to be Christians like he wants us to be. Now come on, don't shout me down this morning. I'm not trying to get you out here to you. It's up to you. You know. But when you see me take off running, you better not say another word about me. You see me shuffling and dancing up here and, and praising the Lord, don't say a word about me. Join. I mean, I ain't telling you to do that, but praise God, don't, don't, don't. Criticize me for doing what the Word of God says. Amen. 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 I love Jesus. Praise God. He's brought me out of so much stuff. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I committed to Him. I was going to praise Him with all of my might if I could. I'm getting a little older and my might may not be as much as it used to be. But I'm going to do what? I'm going to give all of my heart and all of my might to God because he's, a, he's the only one that deserves Jesus. Amen? Right now, I want you, everybody that wants to be full of the Spirit, just say, Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want the rivers of living water flowing out of my Spirit. Father, I thank you right now. Father, I thank you right now that I am full of your Holy Spirit. And I will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I will cast out devils when there's a devil by us. I will Receive my prayer language. And pray according to your will. Say, I thank you, Father, that I'm full of your Holy Ghost. In the 
be good. Isn't the word of God good? Sometimes I'll be talking about the Holy Ghost and my granddaughter and say, Grandpa, that's the Holy Spirit. I say, well, you call it what you want to, and I call it what I want to. It all means the same thing. Let's just wait just a second on the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you. And move across this congregation right now. And let them flow with your Spirit. Let them flow with the gifts of the Spirit. Somebody right now in this building, right in this room, <clears throat> There's a memory that happened a long time ago. And you think about that all the time. Or it's something that you wondered about all your life. A memory that comes up in your mind and keeps you from being what God wants you to be. It keeps you from living in the Spirit because that memory causes you to walk in the flesh, walk in the in, in, in the in the things of the seen instead of the things of the unseen. There's more than one. There's more, there's more than one in here about that. So I pray for you right now. And I command Satan to loose his grip on your mind with that memory. Everybody didn't have the same memory, but it's a memory. I command you, Satan, to lose your grip on that person's mind in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that they've got the mind of Christ and that memory tries to come up. Now, this has happened a long time ago. A long time ago. And there's more than one person. When that memory comes up, they will take your word and cast that memory down because, see, I commanded it to leave, but it will try to come back. But don't you let it say the Lord. Cast it down. Father, I pray for healing in their bodies this morning. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, I decree and declare that they're healthy and they're wealthy. Because your word says we are to prosper. Everything that our hand touches, Lord, you said it would prosper. Every place that we walk, and our souls and our feet tread upon shall be ours. I give you praise for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now don't think that I was trying to get you to do something because I you do what you want to do when you come to church. You know, you can sit there, you can do whatever. I mean, when you get out of order, that's where I come in. And I know the people that's out of order. We had one, one lady trying to kill herself, the dog here in the front, Johnny Robert, the end of that little boy. Come and beat her head against that dog. Finally, I had to tell her, I said, Ma'am, that's from the devil. Well, she got mad and quit. But I believe it saved her life because she's going to kill herself. That's all. God won't embarrass you. God won't try to, try to kill you. He won't try to hurt you. See, that's what pastors are for. Let everything be done decent and in order. Amen. Amen. I love you all. I'm telling you what, I pray for you all every day. I speak the blessings of God over you every day. I speak healing to your lives every day. I speak prosperity in its fullness to you every day. But see, this message, I believe this message was so simple and so, so real that you can see now that hope is the goal setting and faith is what brings it to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed today's program, and we would like for you to come and join us for worship and fellowship. We meet every Sunday, 11 a.m. at the Knott County Sportsplex Conference Room in Hindman. And until next time, from all of us at Faith Life Church, may God bless you and encourage you.